location. So I'm going to talk about location, but I'm going to do it in context of a little bit of, of a story uh, with uh, about two of my, uh, uh, my best friends. Uh, the first one is, uh, is my phone right here in my pocket. And uh, my second friend is don't leave home without it, uh, my MasterCard. So it's a, it's a story of uh, two friends. It's a story about form factors. And I'm going to speak a little bit about fraud in, uh, in mobile payments and the role that location uh, plays in battling fraud and what some of the banks and card issuers are doing today utilizing network location to battle mo mobile payment fraud. So um, my phone and my, my credit card actually used to be you know, pretty good friends. It has a tenuous relationship now. Uh, my, uh, my bank got on my phone a few years ago uh, after I got a smartphone. I could do uh, banking uh, and find uh, branch locations and things of that nature. And then uh, my phone would then let me bank. I can, as you well know, do transactions using my, my phone. And in, in, uh, in some banking transactions, I can deposit uh, uh, checks. I can certainly find uh, ATMs. I can do balance transfers. And they got along pretty good. And they would always ride together. You know, one in one pocket and, and one in the other pocket. They got along great. You know, phones my, and my uh, credit card, my bank card were best buddies. But something's been going on, and, and uh, all of a sudden now my, my phone's getting smart. It's, uh, it's starting to get a new chip, uh, getting some intelligence, some software, and it's starting to push my credit card uh, you know, back down the, uh, out of the way. Uh, here's, a, here's a couple of things that you probably have seen and test or you know about in the industry with regards to uh, NFC and, uh, and mobile payments, you know, ranging from uh, your proprietary readers, uh, you know, chips on devices, uh, even you know, you know, Square, you know, typical mobile banking apps. And my, uh, my bank cards are, are getting a little bit anxious about that because you know, that piece of plastic uh, that I carry, actually I have five of them in my wallet, uh, I don't need to use them as much. I can just use my, use my phone. Um, now, NFC has been talked about for a long time. Uh, it's it's kind of like the, uh, uh, you know, the jet packs and, and other technologies that have a great promise but uh, never seem to take off. And there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, one of the, the biggest reasons is the infrastructure cost uh, required to put in these, uh, these very expensive readers and merchants all over the place. Uh, and also the infrastructure cost with putting the, uh, the chips into the devices. Now, on the... Um, on the infrastructure side, there hasn't been a lot of incentive for the banks or even the card issuers to kind of step up and put that kind of money uh, in place for the merchants. They already make a lot of you know, good money on exchange fees and, and, uh, and the ACH fees and the, and the card processing uh, fees. Um, but these guys, you know, Google, see a, uh, you know, a big opportunity there. So they've really started to be pushing uh, others in the industry to move. Uh, the device OEMs don't really want to invest too much. It costs between two and four dollars estimated uh, to put an NFC uh, reader into a chip. And if you if you look at how many iPhones are out there, you know what four dollars uh, in addition on that device would be. It's 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 going to cut a billion dollars out of the the uh, the operation operating profit out of Apple, or, or about half a percent of gross margin. So there really isn't a huge incentive for the OEMs to invest in NFC. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the merchants are, are like, yeah, give it to me, I'll take it, but I'm not going to put the money up for it. But Google uh, and now others are starting to, uh, to push it, and uh, now there are pre uh, pretty, some pretty aggressive predictions about the, how the NFC readers are going to be uh, in place and the, and the phones are, are going to be uh, able to, uh, to read them. And, and the stats, uh, you've, you've seen lots of graphs and lots of uh, statistics on these, but basically with, uh, with smartphones growing, uh, NFC chips are now starting to grow, so all of us will start, uh, many people in this room certainly do, but in terms of mass market, many of us will be carrying NFC-enabled uh, smartphones. So that's one piece of the equation that, that's, that's coming, and then uh, uh, that's going to drive uh, global uh, M payments or mobile payments um, across the world. Uh, so this is not going away, uh, and then finally, uh, you know, spending uh, on my phone is going to start to eclipse spending on my piece of plastic my credit card. And then soon I won't need that piece of plastic. It'll, it'll just be a backup for when a merchant doesn't have a reader uh, or when the, you know, the pizza guy shows up, as he often does at my house with my two kids, and takes a pen and scrapes those letters, you know, those, excuse me, those numbers on the receipt uh, to get the, get, get the charge. I might have a card or two as backup, but it's not going to be my primary payment device. You know, my phone is going to be my primary payment device. 
So my, my, my two friends, my phone and my credit card, uh, are not friends any longer. The form factor is now you know, migrating to the, to the device itself. And it's, you know, a lot of it has to do with what these guys are driving. You know, it was never about the piece of plastic. It was, it was all about you know, world domination, if you will. And uh, once again, another form factor of plastic uh, uh, goes to the grave. Uh, in this case, you know, we're still battling with the plastic bags here. We're, we've done a good job in California and San Francisco getting rid of them. Uh, the plastic bottles are starting to wane. Now the plastic in my pocket is going to go away uh, with this great new technology. So we shred our cards, and that's great. Uh, but the, there's a lot of authentication. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with these, with these cards. You can even see in the, in the diagram here you know, the, raised, the raised numbers that help you. Uh, the imprint machines know that the card was actually present. You can see pieces of mag stripes that, that get swiped to ver verify that that ind is indeed the card and the number associated with it. Um, but what's not going away uh, in, this, in this new uh, form factor race is that guy. Yeah, the bad guys are still out there. In fact, the bad guys are getting more and more excited about the use of this technology because a lot of consumers are fairly naive about how these, these uh, contactless payments and these, these touchscreen things work. Um, and there's a lot of technology and new and budding technology that, that open up so, both social and, and technology uh, opportunities for, for bad guys to come in. Uh, to basically come in and try to find ways to kind of steal, skim, and take uh, uh, money out of accounts, um, large and small. So just a couple of stats to, to kind of talk about that or back that up. There's 610 million uh, cards that are issued in the United States that are, that are out there, out and about. On average, we carry, each of us carry about 3.5 of those cards in our wallet. Like I said, I have five. I actually might have more because they're not all in my wallet. Um, of those, uh, of those cards, 12% uh, of those, uh, those U.S. consumers experience each year some kind of fraud or identity theft, 12%. Uh, uh, so that's a, that's a lot of folks, uh, that's a lot of cards uh, being uh, skimmed, being tapped, being stolen, uh, being abused. And, and, and a couple of surveys uh, that have done both by uh, Visa, Javelin, uh, Nielsen, others, uh, consistently identity theft Card fraud is the number one fear of Americans. Beyond terrorism, beyond global warming, the economic meltdown, it's identity theft. It's a very personal, sensitive thing. It scares all of us uh, when someone takes us, you know, rapes us of our information and, then, of course, of our assets. So uh, you know, the, uh, the average um, fraud, when it does occur, uh, amounts to uh, about $4,600 when it happens here in the United States. Uh, it's a $10 billion problem for the, for the banks. So, while the banks are, uh, and, the, and the card issuers uh, in the payment industry is very eager to, to bring this new technology uh, in mobile payments and in NFC, there still is a very large uh, a fraud problem. So, of course, the, the reaction is to try to decline as much as possible, be very conservative, you know, stop and protect against fraud, uh, so decline more transactions. Uh, the problem in the banking industry, as is, is most of you know, is that uh, there's this uh, thing called a false positive. False positive uh, for the bank is when there's a red flag, you know, one of the parameters in, in, the, uh, in the algorithms or the analyst uh, in the fraud department it goes off, trigger, trigger happens, it's a positive, uh, a positive uh, fraud event. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, you're using your card here at the Fairmont in San Jose or at a restaurant, uh, and the clerk says, I'm, I'm sorry, the, you, the bank wants to talk to you, and they, they hand you the phone, uh, and then you have to recite the last four of your social uh, or you have to recite you know, a couple of transactions that you've done, and someone on the other line, probably a call center halfway across the globe, says, okay, thanks very much, just want to make sure that was you, it's all safe, your transaction is good to go. Sometimes they don't even bother to call, they'll just flat out reject it and decline you, and that's irritating, and then you have to go to those other 3.5 cards in your wallet, pull it out, and use it. Um, that's happened to me uh, on, you know, I have a business card for business expenses, one for personal. If one doesn't work, it messes up my entire uh, accounting system uh, with my receipts when I go on a business trip. But these declines really do hurt the industry. Uh, these are some, uh, some survey results uh, from a white paper from Visa about uh, abandonment, how people stop using a card or a payment vehicle if they get declined. Um, and in addition, we talked about the false positives. That's the approximate cost depending on the bank and, and, and how they, if they do it they sell themselves or they outsource it, of a false positive. That, hey, positive fraud event, but it was false, it was really the cardholder. $25 to $40, that's the cost. And that's the cost without mobile location. So, so one of the things that's happening in the banking industry is, well, how do you validate 
particularly in mobile payments, whether or not the cardholder is really present or not. How do you know that they're actually there in an NFC transaction or using the, uh, the banking application on their phone in the way that uh, is, is a legitimate practice? Um, well, what the banks and the card issuers have determined is that you can use mobile location to do that. The, mo all these smartphones ha have the ability to communicate. Actually, any phone has the ab ability to communicate uh, back at a location. Uh, now, there's various sources of location. There's GPS location. There's Wi-Fi location. Uh, there's cell tower location. The banks have figured out that I could they use the mobile location to determine whether or not uh, someone is present. That's the cost of a false positive with location. It's just a nickel. That's it with, with no location. That's it with location. And the reason is because when you pick up the phone and you have someone in a call center call you uh, at a merchant, a restaurant, or hotel, and you have to get on the phone and say yes or no, it's, it's me, and go through that process and the paperwork and all that, that costs the bank a lot of time and money, uh, lost sales, uh, angry customers. Instead, what they do is they ping the phone. They ping the device and say, that mobile device, remember the picture with my jacket, the phone and the card is always riding you know, together. Uh, if that mobile device, which is a proxy for my physical location here on the planet, is anywhere near that transaction, then the bank can say, you know, we have a pretty high confidence that that's really Rip Gerber there uh, using the card at the Fairmont in San Jose. And that cost of that ping is less than a nickel. And so that, that's a big, um, a, a big uh, preventive, uh, preventative measure that the banks and the card issuers are now using with mobile location in the mobile industry. Big cost savings there. That's how it works. Basically, I just described, there's, there's me in a tie. Uh, I'm using my card. My location A is here, here in uh, the Fairmont in, in, uh, in San Jose. The location on my phone happens to be here. If I used my card, you know, Visa, the issuing bank, would ping that and say, you know, he's actually physically there. It, it's OK. Don't, don't ring up a false positive. That's the process. Here's it a little bit more kind of technical with a map, but the benefits you see that we've just gone through is we, we reduce the, uh, the decline decisions uh, or, or optimize the improvements uh, on, um, on, on approvals. And then we reduce the customer contact. Uh, the card issue or efficiency is, uh, is up. And then the customer experience is up. And that's all using mobile location. Now, you can't use any kind of mobile location. You think, well, why do you have to ping the phone? You, you, you know that basically the device is there, right? It just was right in front. It was four centimeters away from the reader. That's NFC, right? The challenge is that fraud guys can get in between this transaction and trick the device, trick the chip into the actual location of the phone. So if you don't believe this, and I didn't believe it at first when, when uh, the fraud guys were telling me this, um, my son has an Android phone. He's 14 years old. Uh, I was sent to a website. Uh, my son downloaded uh, a free little app onto his Android phone. In a matter of three minutes, he was able to have every single application on his phone say that he was in China. It's called a GPS spoofing app. You can, any, anybody can download it on the phone. iPhone, Android, people write these to trick them. And now I know what he's going to do. Now that I showed him how to do this, since I have a family tracking app on him with Life360, just in case something goes, you know, there's an earthquake like there was you know, a week ago, was it a week ago, I think a 4.0 we had in San Francisco shook the house. You know, I have an emergency uh, application on my phone where I can track my entire family at any point in time. Well, of course, you know, as he goes into high school, I'm going to be seeing where he's going on the weekends, et cetera. He's going to start spoofing his location, and I'm going to look him up on my app, and he's going to be in China. Anyone could do that. Well, the fraud guys do that to trick the location of the device, you know, onshore or offshore. It happens with NFC as well. The only way to authenticate the presence of, of a mobile device is with one of these. That's a cell tower. There's a quarter of a million of these things uh, in the country. You see them on top of buildings. And this one is uh, dressed up as a tree, uh, hidden as a tree. It's the only way to authenticate it because you can't trick the location of the device. The, the, the way that the, the wireless networks are built for, for roaming, uh, they have to know the, the approximate location in order to do you know, inter-carrier billing, you know, roaming, you know, make the data, the voice, the email, everything work. But you can't move these around and trick a location because it's network location, it's not device location. So this is the only kind of location. It comes from the carriers. It comes from Verizon and AT&T. It's the only kind of mobile location that the banks and the card issuers and other people that want a verified location that cannot be spoofed. It's the only one that they'll use. You know, an example of this is, um, is in mobile payments, there's mobile gambling. I don't, I don't know if uh, anyone has been working on the gambling, uh, or as they say, not gambling, gaming business, mobile gaming business. Um, but in, um, in the state of uh, Nevada, 
you can now place bets, sports bets, on your smartphone. It used to be that you could only do it in the casino, kind of sitting within the four walls. Uh, last few years, they've had tethered devices that work on a protected Wi-Fi network, and you can walk a few steps outside the door, and then it, then it breaks, or go up into your room. Well, now, through carrier authenticated location uh, through, through our company, um, we are authorized, or have been authorized, and the applications that we enable have been approved by the Nevada uh, Gaming Board to allow um, bettors or consumers to place bets on their smartphones. I mean, that's because it's carrier authenticated location. Same thing in, in payments, uh, in mobile payments as well. Uh, here's how it works in payments. You know, I, I like we just described. I'm in this, uh, you know, Sunset District. Um, you know, I use my car. The, the, the phone is actually in that district. Great. No reason to, no reason to stop the transaction. ATM skimming is a, is another use of this uh, that the banks are are going after. And we uh, seven of the top ten banks now are currently plugged into the uh, location APIs that we offer. Uh, and two of the largest card issuers here um, uh, in the country are also plugged in, trialing and using this, uh, this location API that comes from the wireless operators from the cell towers to authenticate uh, mobile payments. So it does more than fraud prevention, of course. Um, this is located, this is what uh, we do. We're a location as a service. We're a horizontal platform. We serve more than just the, uh, the uh, payment industry. Um, it's used for, yes, credit card fraud that we talked about, but also mobile marketing. Uh, we enable some of the largest campaigns that want to get SMS messages to smartphones as well as feature phones. Uh, shipment tracking with some of the largest uh, companies that are in the shipment business uh, when a GPS signal doesn't work uh, for important packages. Uh, we talked about the mobile gaming industry and, of course, uh, family safety that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's uh, just some of the uses of uh, a mobile location uh, with the carriers beyond uh, the mobile payments industry. And that's it. Thanks very much for your time.